Hello, my lady. Hold on a second. Yes, yeah, and I'm here. I say I might as well do a review of the Stephen King TV adaptation of Under the Dome. Now, I've seen two episodes so far. The pilot episode I saw on, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, television Fanatic on uh, the computer, and the other one I saw, the second one I saw on demand on Time Order through the cable box. And I'm really happy with it, because I remember reading the book a while back, and then how good it was. I thought it would make a good TV movie if they did it right. Now the biggest problem was, I remember reading the book Desperation, and that's an awesome book. And then ABC tried to condense all that into like a three hour time frame, and it was awful. I mean, what makes me mad is like people magazine would review it, and they, and they blame Stephen King for that. That's not Stephen King's fault, that's ABC's fault. For trying to combine the three hours, you had to draw it out. But there's so much in the book. The book itself is awesome. You know, and then, you know, you have to do it right, just like uh, with Under the Dome was over, what that, 14,000, 1,400 pages? I remember reading that when it first came out and hearing about it. I have a video called Attention. Uh, Stephen King fan, I talk about that coming to TV. And how good it was, how good it looked. And Jeff Day, he plays the sheriff in there in the first episode, and then you remember he got too close to the dome and his pacemaker exploded. He died. He's in the second one a little bit as a, as a corpse. Uh, he's in it a little bit. Uh, and then, you know, they got all the crazy characters. Big Jim Renee, you know, from the book you think he'd be really heavy and heavy set and portly. But in this one, he's more middle of the road, like uh, in his 40s. Like a Michael Chiklis type uh, physique. Not super heavy, not super skinny, like somewhere in between. And uh, the book is really, the TV show is really good and it's going to be taken in like 13 hour long episodes. It's on Monday nights at 10 o'clock on CBS. I think they're doing a good job. The only complaint is I think uh, the second episode they had a house fire and the house fire wasn't very convincing because when they first started you could tell it was CGI and then the way the house burnt. And they, the way they showed it throughout the scene, or two or three scenes, it just didn't look right. That's the only complaint I have so far with the show. But aside from that, uh, it looks like it's taken off real well. And then they have a crazy boyfriend on there. Uh, you know, there's a girl named Leanna, who's the overly attached girlfriend. They should call him the overly attached boyfriend. They should get together, because I think they'd be perfect together. That guy's nuts. And he locked his girlfriend in a in a underground bomb shelter from the 50s they built there. And actually, he's the councilman's uh, son, you know, Big Jim Renee, who you thought would be heavy, but he's not heavy. Stuff, but he's not. But this has been a really good show so far. And tomorrow night at 10 o'clock is the third episode. So, you know, I'll be there if you will be. It's really good. I like what they're doing with the with the thing so far. And also, uh, something else that happened was, just by a stroke of accident, when I was watching it on the computer, uh, oh, the Adobe Flash kind of crashed, froze up and crashed on me. And usually I'd be upset, but I was making hamburgers and stuff for in the morning. I saw it like at 5.30 in the morning, or 5 in the morning. And I got the hamburgers out, and I didn't feel like much with the computer. But I just had to eat my hamburger, and I turned on the TV, and on Turner Class Mood to a show called Ghost Ship. Which is an old Val Luton uh, produced movie about uh, a shipmate on a ship, and then he sees that this cam that captain is nuts and crazy, and he killed like uh, he killed like one or two crew members, and he's afraid that he's going to kill him too. It's really good, and just by a stroke of luck, I thought at first I thought it was a Bella Ghosty movie, but the Bella Ghost movie was called Phantom Ship, and Phantom Ship is a really hard movie to find. I was glad I bought it on. Public domain VHS, but usually if you look it up in like the movie books, it's, the Phantom Ship's not even listed. So it's a real rarity. I'm I'm happy I got that one. I don't know where it's at now, but it's a good movie. Well, anyways, Ghost Ship is really good. Uh, Val Luton is the one who did movies like the original two Cat People, one not the '82 remake, with the cool David Bowie song uh, "Putting Out Fire with Gasoline." But he had that, and then he had the movie Walk with a Zombie, and Bedlam as his. Uh, 
Oh, Boris Karloff in Insane Asylum, that's a really good movie. And uh, like I said, it's really good. Ghost Ship is really good. And it's just by a stroke of luck that I was able to see it just because the Adobe crashed. So. so that's something else that happened. That's a good movie, too. It's from 1939. It's only an hour and nine minutes. It's really good. And then I read a curious fact. They said the only reason that movie was made was because... Uh, I think it was made from Ar by RKO, either RKO or Warner Brothers, because the ship, the, the sets of the ship were so expensive, they wanted to use it in another movie. That's the only reason the movie was ever made, actually. So, but thankfully, the movie was made. It was really good. So, check out uh, Under the Dome on CBS every Monday at 10 o'clock, and check out Ghost Ship if you can, if you can find it. So, until next time, take care of my legion.